All right, welcome to our kids' Bible study. This is for Sunday, June 16th, 2024. Last time we covered, we finished Matthew chapter 3, and we saw Jesus being baptized by John. And so we'll continue with the next story here in Matthew 4. And this is, I probably didn't write it too good, but maybe I'll write it better down here. It is Jesus tempted by the devil. And there's a whole lot we can say on this, but of course we don't have a whole lot of time. So um, one thing to note here, I mentioned last time how we saw in Matthew 3 verse 16 that when Jesus came out of the water, once he'd been water baptized, he received the Spirit of God. And then we read Matthew 4 23 and we saw in Matthew 4 23 that Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And so I said that Jesus received the Spirit of God so that He may do miracles. And that's true. That's why He received the Spirit of God, because He had to do miracles so that when He preached the gospel for them to be saved, that they would believe that gospel so that they could uh, be with God forever instead of ending up in hell. But you notice the first thing that happens, though, when Jesus receives the Spirit of God isn't that he goes around doing miracles. It says, so in Matthew 3, 16, the Spirit of God came upon him. And then Matthew 4, verse 1 says, Matthew 4, verse 1, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So, you know, we think, oh yeah, it's cool, Jesus has the Spirit of God, He's going to go out and heal the sick, heal the blind people, heal the people that can't walk, He's going to raise the dead, He's going to cast out devils, He's going to do all these wonderful things. But the first thing He does, the Spirit doesn't go lead Him to do that, the Spirit goes and leads Him to be tempted of the devil. And He is tempted in Matthew 4 verse 2, it said, when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. Fasting means you don't eat. So he didn't eat for 40 days. And he is tempted of the devil. So, Jesus tempted of the devil for 40 days. Tempted 40 days. And he doesn't eat. The whole time, 40 days. I tell you, if I go four hours without eating, I start to get hungry. You know, I get up and I eat breakfast, and then I go to work, and then I've been working about four hours or so, and I'm thinking, I'm getting kind of hungry. I need to eat lunch. <laughs> well, I just ate four hours ago. I'm already hungry. Jesus didn't eat for 40 days. And then it said, only afterward, he was a hungered. I mean, I notice I'm getting hungry after four hours. Jesus didn't notice he was hungry. And not only did he not eat for 40 days, it said he was afterward a hungered. Meaning, he wasn't hungry during the 40 days. And the reason is because that first temptation, he says in verse 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So he is, Jesus is so focused on what God's word says and following that because he's tempted the whole 40 days. And so the way to overcome temptation is to use God's word. We're going to see here uh, verses 3 down through verse uh, 10. Verses 3 through 10 that there are three temptations that Jesus goes through. And these he went through these throughout the whole 40 days, not just the one time. Um, so he, uh, I wanted to try to find the verse. Uh, Luke, the book of Luke, talks about the same temptations here. And at the end of those temptations, though, this apparently, the Luke account happened earlier because in Luke 4.13... Luke 4.13 says, it's the same three temptations in Luke 4 as in Matthew 4. So everybody thinks to say, oh, well, they're just recording the same event. 
No, they're not. Um, the temptations in Luke 4 are in a different order than the ones in Matthew 4. But also notice how it ends. Luke 4.13 says, Luke 4.13 says, When the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. So what that means is the devil left for a while. Devil left for a while. Which means if he just left for a season, then he came back. You know, we have seasons. Right now, it's June 16th. This next week, it will be summer. Right now, it's considered to be spring. Um, it's hot enough to be summer, but <laughs> where I am anyway. But uh, the, the way we call that a season. Three months of the season of spring, then three months of the season of summer, then three months of the season of fall, then three months of the season of winter. And so if the devil left him for a season, that meant that well, he comes back. But in Matthew 4, verse 11, Matthew 4, 11, it says, Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So the devil left for a while in Luke 4, but in Matthew 4, the devil leaves him. So what that means is, the Luke 4, this happened first. And then the Matthew 4 happened second. The temptations listed are the same, but they're in a different order because they happen at different times. And the point is that Jesus didn't just get tempted at the end of the 40 days. He's tempted by the devil the whole time because the devil knows if he can get Jesus to sin just one time, then Jesus can't die for my sins. He's got to die for his own sins. See, that's the reason, you know, you could take me and you could put me on a cross and kill me. And someone else could say, I trust in Eric who died for my sins. That wouldn't work. It would not work. Because I can't die for anybody's sins because I have sinned. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so if we are killed, well, we, we have to pay for our own sins. But Jesus, he never sinned. So the reason we trust that Jesus, because there are other people, when we get there at the end of Matthew, we'll see there were, there were thieves, there were other people who were killed on crosses right next to Jesus. We don't trust in them to pay for our sins because they got to pay for their own. But Jesus never sinned. So when he died on that cross, he died for our sin. The reason we get to go to heaven is because Christ paid for our sins. And the devil knows then that if he can tempt Jesus and get him to sin just one time, well then Jesus can't die for my sins or for your sins. He's got to die for his own sins. And then no one gets to go to heaven. And so the devil, he's, he's the mean guy. He's the bad guy here. We don't like him. He's trying to, to get Jesus to sin just one time. So he tries. He doesn't just try at the end of the 40 days. He tries over and over during that time. Now you may think, well, why? You know, Jesus just got the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God, he's going to do miracles through, through the Spirit. So why wouldn't, um, you know, why wouldn't Jesus just do the miracles? You know, why get tempted? Why go through 40 days of being tempted and not eating the whole time? You know, why? Well, the reason is because uh, Jesus will die for our sins. The reason he dies for our sins is because he was tempted. Because he understands what it's like. You know, when I was younger, when I was a kid, um, not a lot of bad things that happened in my life. You know, as you, as you get older, there's a lot of good things that happen, but there are a lot of bad things that happen. And as time goes on, you understand and you have more compassion or love for people who have bad things happen to them because you've had those things happen to you too. So, you know, if you've never had something, you know, something really bad happen to somebody, but you've never had that happen to you, I mean, you may feel bad for them, but it's hard for you to feel really bad because you don't know what it's like. But if you had that same thing happen to you and then they go through it, well then, you know, you, 
you feel real bad for him. You know, I had a, a co-worker whose husband died. And I attended the funeral, and I know I felt bad for her. And, uh, you know, that's a hard thing to go through. But then, not too long after that, my wife died. Well, she had a lot more, I think, she had more compassion for me than I had for her because her husband had died. She went through all the pain of not having her husband around anymore. And then shortly thereafter, my wife died. So she understands what I'm going through. You know, I felt bad for her and I, you know, wanted to do what I could for her before uh, when, when her husband died, but I didn't have that compassion like she had for me because she'd been she'd gone through it and I hadn't. And so for Jesus, dying on a cross is the most cruel torture that man has ever experienced. Uh, we won't go through all the details of why that is, but it's it's about the worst. I think it is the worst thing that man could go through. And uh, why would Jesus do that for us? when we didn't do anything for him. Well, it's because he is tempted. In Hebrews chapter 4, and I realize we're not going to get through all the temptations this time, so we'll have to uh, go through that next time. But Hebrews 4 and verse 14. Hebrews 4.14 4 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15 says, Jesus is touched. Jesus is touched by the feelings, is it feelings? feeling, by the feeling of our infirmities. Now, infirmities is a big word. That just basically means that you're sick. They used to call, you know, what a hospital is. Somebody is sick has to go to a hospital, you know, if they're bad enough where they can't recover at home, they got to go to a hospital. Well, they used to call them, they didn't call them hospitals, they called them infirmaries. And an infirmary is for somebody who is sick. You've got an infirmity. And spiritually speaking, we are sick. We have sin. And you know how it is. You'll try to do the right thing, and sometimes you will, but a lot of times you won't because you're, you're sick. You know, that's why Jesus had to die for our sins. So Jesus is tempted uh, to sin over and over in those 40 days and afterward as well. Now, he it says that he went without sin, so he did not sin. But he is touched by the feeling of our infirmities. He doesn't know what it's like to sin because he never sinned. And thank God for that because then he can pay for our sins. But he does know what it's like to be tempted. He knows that it was a difficult choice not to sin. And he chose not to sin every time. And so, then, when the Father asks him to die on a cross to pay for our sins, Jesus did it because he was touched by the feeling of our infirmities. He says, they're sick. You know, just like my co-worker is touched that my wife died. She knows what it's like because her husband died not too long before my wife died. And so, she felt bad for me. She knows what I'm going through. She's been through it before. Jesus knows when we make the bad choice, we do what we shouldn't do, and we sin. Jesus knows what that's like. He never sinned, but He knows how hard it is to make the right choice all the time. And so He's touched with our feeling of our infirmities, of our spiritual sickness. And so He says, Yes, Father, I will go to the cross to pay for their sins. Because I know that it's not easy to stay away from sin. And I know everybody failed. 
except for me. And so I want to be able to pay for their sins so that they can be in heaven uh, with you when they die. And so uh, that's the reason Jesus is tempted. He's got to have the understanding of what it's like to be tempted with sin. So then he will have compassion on us. So that's why when you get down, and, and we're going to see as we go along, uh, Jesus has, you know, he heals all these people. He has compassion on them. He dies on a cross. His whole ministry of healing people, preaching the gospel, uh, raising the dead, casting out devils, all that he does all the way through the cross and everything, all of that is because he's touched by our sickness. And he says, I can help these people. I can heal them physically and I can heal them spiritually. So I'm going to do that because I understand what it's like to be tempted with sin. And so that's why it's so important that the first thing that happens is that Jesus has to be tempted by sin so that then he will have the compassion on everybody to heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, preach the gospel so that they may be saved, and then ultimately to die on a cross for their sins. It all comes from that time there. You know, I have now, when someone dies, that, you know, a family, somebody that I know has a family member who dies, I have a lot more compassion on them than I would several years ago because my wife died three years ago, almost three years ago. And so from now on, I got more compassion for people that experience the death of a, a family member, a loved one. And so Jesus, from now on, when he is tempted of the devil, he understands what it's like, and he's going to have great compassion on everybody. So now you're going to see him from now on healing people, preaching the gospel so that they may be saved, casting out devils, just having compassion, doing whatever he can for everybody because he knows um, they're hopeless without him because they're going to sin because they have that sin nature. Uh, so uh, we're out of time. So what we'll do next time is we'll go through these temptations. It's very important to understand them. In Hebrews 4, it said, uh, 15 looks terrible, doesn't it? It says he was tempted in all points like as we are. And you say, well, uh, Jesus wasn't tempted like me. I mean, he didn't have a gun and tempt to shoot somebody. He didn't have, you know, the ability to, you know, all these modern things, go on the internet and do things you shouldn't do on the internet. Um, they didn't have the internet, right? But he was tempted. There are three categories of temptations. Every temptation you have falls into one of these categories. It either has to do with the flesh, it has to do with your eyes, or it has to do with pride. And maybe all three. And so the reason you've got three temptations in Matthew 4 is it's those three categories. And that's what it means that he was tempted in all points, like as we are. You know, Jesus wasn't tempted to cheat on a test in school. Probably didn't go to school. He probably was doing stuff. His school was learning from his father. Learning the Bible from his father. Being taught by God himself. Um, and so he didn't, he didn't have to you know, go to school like, like you would have to do. Because he was taught by his father instead. So he wouldn't be tempted to cheat on a test. Because it was a different situation than what you're in. But he still goes through those three categories that everybody goes through. And so uh, we'll go through that next time. But we're out of time this time. So let's close in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for sending your son Jesus. That he, we thank you that he was tempted that he had so that he could have compassion on us and die on a cross to pay for our sins. We thank you that we get to go to heaven because of what Jesus did for us. Help us, Lord, to read the Bible and believe what it says and follow it so that we show your love to others so that they also may be saved. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we'll go through the temptations next week. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.